By the end of this video, you're going to have everything you need for quick and easy software development inside NeoVim. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be setting up a few plugins. We're going to be setting up our language server protocol settings inside NeoVim. We're going to be talking about key bindings and how it all fits together to make everything quick and productive. Then we're going to be going to some essential remaps that you're really not going to want to miss out on. Our configuration journey begins at a file called init.lua and this is going to be in NeoVim's configuration directory. Now for Windows this is going to be for this is going to be a little different, but for Linux your configuration directory should be the same as mine. The first thing we're going to be setting up today is the lazy plugin manager. The lazy plugin manager is what we're going to be using to integrate and manage the other plugins we're going to be installing inside of NeoVim. And for the lazy maxers among us, it comes with a beautiful user interface to basically uh, manage and do everything we're going to be needing to do with the plugins, including installing, updating. All the documentation will be linked in the details below. But to get started, we're going to be bootstrapping Lazy into NeoVim. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to head over to the documentation section. We're going to be basically copying all of the bootstrap code that it gives us. And we're just going to be pasting that right into our init.lua files. Now mine's going to look a little bit different. My dot files will be available, but we're going to just sort of break this down. And what's going to happen here is we're eventually going to be giving this thing another file with our plugin list. If you want, you can just copy this block of code and replace it inside of the parentheses here. If you don't want to separate different files, you can also follow the documentation if you want to separate this into different files. And depending on how you set it up, this is essentially going to be a relative path to the plugin list based off of the files in the Lua directory in the config directory. But we're going to be going into that. So the last part of the code that we copied is going to be a require and a setup statement where we're just going to be calling require the setup. I'm going to give it a path to my file and inside the plugin file itself, it's just going to look like this. We're just going to be returning. We're just going to be returning a single block of code that declares each of the different plugins that we're going to be bringing inside NeoVim. And if I go back to my example here, you can see the require statement. And this is going to go to a file called the plugin list, which is similarly just returning a block of code declaring all the plugins that I have installed. After the bootstrap code is set up, you should be able to restart NeoVim. You can do colon into command mode, start typing in lazy with a capital W, and then and the lazy menu should pop up for you. Now we have our plugin manager set up. We're going to talk about Telescope. Telescope is going to be one of the most important plugins we integrate inside of NeoVim. Not only is this going to integrate with our language server protocol, but it's going to have a bunch of built in features that are going to be important for our workflows. For example, we're going to be using this to quickly jump between files, quickly jumping to diagnostic issues inside of our code, using it to quickly jump to definitions. And I wouldn't even have time to go over a number of the built in useful functions it has including doing a live grep over your entire project, even fuzzy finding man pages and choosing your color scheme. To get set up is really easy. We're just gonna head over to the GitHub. We're gonna go down to the installation section. We're just gonna copy. We're just gonna copy this block of code and we're gonna head back and we're gonna paste it right into our plugin list. And after you pasted it, you should be able to restart NeoVim. You can do a colon, type in telescope with a capital, and the menu should pop up. And later we're gonna get into we're gonna get into making this quick. It's time to turn NeoVim into a proper code editor. We're gonna be setting up our language server protocol. And this is gonna give us everything we would expect from an integrated development environment, such as diagnostic warnings, code completion cover documentation, code refactoring, and much more. The first step in this process is we're going to be installing a plugin called 
NVIM LSP config. And what this is gonna do is essentially give us a bunch of pre-installed LSP configurations that we're gonna be using with our LSP. And to get this set up is pretty simple. We're just gonna be adding one import line into our plugin list, which is gonna to point to the NeoVim LSP GitHub. Once we have the LSP config plugin installed, all we need to do to activate it for a specific language is to add a single line of code into our Lua, which will be a vim.lsp.enable command. And we're just gonna be giving it the name of our language server protocol. In this example, we would have the Rust Analyzer. Now it's important to note that I would need this installed on my system, as NeoVim will not install this for you. There are other plugins that can manage the installation of language server protocols if you need, but for it to work, you do have to have the language server protocol pre-installed. And then you can just call one line of code to enable it. We're gonna wanna set up something important here. Essentially, every time our LSP attaches to a buffer, we're gonna wanna set up a specific set of key bindings that we're gonna be using for a number of different commands during our, during our workflow. And to do that, we're gonna be using the create auto command method, and we're gonna be going into the LSP attach command. Now, feel free to copy and paste this code from our dot files. But we're just going to quickly walk through what's going on. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up some key bindings. And the main line of code to set up your key binding is going to be this vim.keymap.set command. But we're wrapping this in a helper function. That's just going to make it a little easier to set up some of our key bindings. And each one of these line of codes is just going to copy the helper function, declare the type of key bindings we're going to be using, the command that it's going to activate, and a little description of what the command is, which is specifically going to be useful for the which key menu that you see popping up down below. After you installed the LSP plugin, you've enabled your specific language and you're attaching specific key bindings to the buffer. You're going to have a very functioning NeoVim at this point, but it's not going to be fully complete. What you're going to be missing specifically is some auto completion functionality. But once we have that set up, we're pretty much gonna have a fully functioning code editor. The autocomplete plugin we're gonna be setting up is gonna give us three powerful features. First is gonna be giving us auto completion when we type, which is kind of expected. The next feature, if I do a colon and go into command mode, you'll notice a menu pop up. That menu is auto populated by the completion plugin. And the third feature is when I do the forward slash search, the autocompletion will populate a menu as I type. We're going to be setting up the NVIM CMP plugin. The documentation can be a little harsh for newbies, so I'm going to try and give you some examples of this in the code. So to get started, we're going to be adding the plugin to our plugin list with also a list of dependencies in a dependency block, as shown. You can get a feel of the plugins and the dependencies that we're going to be adding from the code that's in the documentation. But feel free to copy our example in the DAW files. Once we have the plugin set up, we're going to scroll down the documentation and we're going to be copying everything between the Lua EOF line. So I'm going to go ahead and copy everything down all the way to the end of file. And we're going to be posting that inside our init.lua file, or you can separate this down to a separate file if you'd like. It's going to seem a little verbose, but we're just going to do a little bit of adjustments to it, and then it's going to be all set up. So depending on the snippet engine that you're going to be using included with the plugin, you're going to be undocumenting one of these lines of code here. I chose the Lua snip engine. After you undocument that line of code, you just might want to scroll down a little to the sources block a little bit further down. You might need to adjust some of the lines by uncommenting or commenting depending on your engine once again. But after that, that should be all you need to get set up. Go ahead and check out the documentation again and our own dot files to make sure everything's tight. But after you've got the configuration and the plugin in the plugin list, you should be able to restart NeoVim and then you can do a colon, go into command mode, start typing in one of the commands and see if the menu starts auto-populating for you. 
If something didn't work, either the plugin, either the plugin wasn't added to the plugin list, or maybe there was an issue with the config code that we copied and pasted itself. And the last step to get this working with the LSP, we're gonna head back into our LSP settings. We're gonna be adding one more section of code. We're gonna be calling require and the plugin name and its default capabilities. And then we're gonna be adding that to the vim.lsp config method, like it's given in this example. And this is gonna attach the default capabilities when our LSP fires up. And after that, our auto completion is complete. Before we get into a few essential plugins and remaps that we're gonna be adding, let's talk about key bindings for a minute. Key bindings are what brings everything together into a fast and smooth workflow. And you can think of key bindings in layers. As one key bind is pressed, it can activate an entirely new set of key bindings. So key bindings are not just you press it and you activate some command, but you can have a path of key bindings leading to a command, increasing the number of key bindings you can add and allowing you to trigger those key bindings just like you were typing in a word. And one concept that we have is the leader key. You can think of a leader key as a dedicated key to activate an entire set of key bindings. And pro tip, putting your leader key as a spacebar can make for some rapid fire key combinations. For example, when I wanna open up my telescope find files command, I can just do a leader FF, space FF, and the menu just fires open. So I would suggest setting up, as you can see at the top, the space as the leader key. And then when you see the definition for some of the key bindings, similar to this line here, leader FF is gonna activate my find files command. Now let's talk about a few juicy remaps. First, leader P. Leader P is a remap that I learned off of Primogen, the Primogen. And essentially what this line of code is gonna do if I copy a line of code and then paste it over this line of code, I essentially lose the last thing I copied in my yank stack and it's replaced by what I copied over. What leader P and this line is gonna do is it's gonna give me a command that I can use so I can copy, paste over something and I still won't lose what's in my yank stack. Another juicy remap is going to be adding ZZ after control D and control U. So control D and control U scroll up and down. And what ZZ is gonna do is when you scroll, it's gonna center the line on the screen. So leader P and ZZs with the control D and control U, very juicy remaps you're gonna wanna have in your toolkit. With telescope, with the key bindings, with the LSP setup, with the completion plugin, you should have yourself a fairly productive setup for coding inside NeoVim. All right, so some must have plugins that you're not gonna want a NeoVim without. First one's gonna be which key. Every time you press a key, which key is gonna give you a menu showing you the other keys that you can press, which key is super useful. Go ahead and set that one up too. You're gonna to want to install Lua line. That's gonna give you a nice, beautiful line at the bottom of your NeoVim, just like mine. And you're gonna to want to install LazyGit. LazyGit is gonna give you a beautiful menu that can be used to quickly interact with your Git workflows inside a NeoVim. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. And if you did find it helpful, please consider liking and even subscribing if you want to. Feel free to catch us on Twitch. You can join our Discord. And you can always catch us here on YouTube.